Hi, I'm Rob Kaufner and CEO of Plitch. I'm happy to be here. So Rob, what exactly is Plitch for people who don't know? Can you get, kind of give a brief description of what this platform is all about? Of course. So Plitch is a, is a software that allows you to individualize your single player PC games, your skills and taste. Uh, you can make them harder or easier as you go. It's your little helper whenever you're stuck in a situation, but it can also make your game even more challenging if that's what you request. Before people lose their minds, you said single player games. So this is not for like competitive games like Valorant or anything like that. These are specifically cheats and mods, kind of mods and cheats for single player narrative games that you play offline, correct? You're absolutely right, Greg. So what you have to understand is we're gamers ourselves, and there's nothing worse in this world than having a cheater in a multiplayer game. I mean, they just ruin everything. So when we set out to say, okay, look, we became dads, we're, you know, we're getting older, stuff like that. We're not, we don't, simply don't have that much time. So we wanted to have a software that helps us still enjoy all the really cool games that are out there. That being said, what do you need to know about myself? I studied law, intellectual property law, so I really know what I'm talking about. And I said to my co-founder, look, the only way I'm going to found a company with you that sells cheats is if we do that the correct way. You know? So morality is very high, looking at, uh, at all the possibilities that we have in our rights, but also in let's just create the best gaming experience we can do. Now, what's the difference between your platform uh, of cheats uh, and like mods from like the Steam Workshop and stuff like that? Can you go into a little bit like what separates your platform from that? Glitch is an all-in-one PC software, really. It's not a platform where community um, brings their own trainers in because we, that's how we start. That's how everybody starts, really. You know, there's a lot of forums where you can just exchange trainers and cheats and mods and stuff like that. but. You, you come to a point where you see, okay, I don't know what I'm downloading here. Is that some kind of virus, something like that? I simply don't know. It usually doesn't work first time you try it. And then the next question you have to ask yourself is, what if my game get patched? We're understanding that we're a professional provider of this. So you get a software that is checked, that is secure. Uh, we apply by GDPR. So that's one of the strongest data protection laws in the world. And even more so, we focus on patches too so it's not only about adding the newest and coolest games to our platform but it's also about keeping it up to date um, typically in a good month we're pushing somewhere around 800 to 1000 updates automatically into pillage so that all the games we cover stay up to date and you can use your cheats and mods at any time now, can you talk about how you implement these cheats and mods? Uh, is, it, is it similar to like, a, I'm kind of old school, but is it like the Game Genie days where you're actually messing with the code or are these literally mods that you're uh, making custom for the game through your software? Well, the Game Genie has been our, you know, <laughs> our big role model, to be honest. Uh, we understand we are kind of like a modern day Game Genie, but the technology is different. What we're doing is we're not looking at the game's code at all. We're only looking at what is happening in your computer's memory. And we see routines in there. So imagine you're firing a gun that still has six rounds left. Somewhere in the memory, then there will be a routine that says, so if you pull the trigger, then set the bullet count minus one. When we find that routine, we reroute it, and we write our own routine on top of it saying, if it goes by minus one, put it back up by plus one and send the new value created here back to the original place. That way, now you pull the trigger for a fraction of a second, you get minus one, but it immediately jumps back to because of the plus one routine we implemented. Now you have unlimited shots. And your, your software works for uh, mainly Steam, but also Origin as well, correct? Did you have other platforms that you're supporting? Well, basically supporting all platforms, Origin, Steam, Uplay, GOG. I mean, we even used to support Discord when they still had a store. Truth be told, Steam is just the biggest fish out there. Uh, everybody's requesting Steam games. That's where all the games are published first. I mean, Epic Games is, uh, the Epic Store is really catching up, but still the majority of our uh, gamers use Steam. Are you able to do this on, on console at all? Or are there too many uh, limitations and restrictions because uh, console is much more complicated security-wise, I know, than Steam and other platforms? From a technical perspective, it's not a problem, really. <laughs> um, it really is a licensing problem. So what you need to understand is that PC is an open platform and Microsoft Windows, where we operate on solely, always says it's an open platform software. So you basically don't have to knock on doors to get a license to get in there and build your program. Now, when you try to do the same for Sony, for PlayStation, or you know, or even Nintendo, wherever, 
uh that's when you need to start knocking on doors and we did and they told us look guys what you do is interesting but controversial show us that you can get like really you know show us how big you can grow on pc and then we'll consider giving you a license so we're, we're trying to get there what's been the single most difficult thing when developing code because each code has to be you know you said programmed individually based on the game and so the, there's a list of games you have support. Um, what's the biggest challenge in, because there's so many games out there, what's the biggest challenge in supporting as many games as possible? One of the hardest parts is really uh, deciding which game to do. I mean, there's some th something like 50, 60 games per week getting published on Steam. And when we're nearing fourth quarter, we even talk about hundreds of games. So which ones do you pick? That's a hard part. When, once we did pick a game, um, timing is crucial. Um, we our business works in a way where we have to offer those codes as soon as possible. Now, still, as you can imagine, publishers, when we approach them, even though we have the strong morality code and all of that, they're like, okay, but it's, it's still cheat. So we're not going to give you like a press license or something like that. <laughs> now, be being in Germany, we very often have games that, uh, that get published like 2 a.m. our time, something like that. And in that case, it's really okay. Someone has to draw the shorter stick and you're going to spend your night awake when the game gets published at 2 a.m. You're going to buy it immediately and then build the first code. So by 7 a.m. in the morning when you know life starts in Germany, our trainer is finished and we can roll out. Steam and other platforms have an achievement system. Does your Plitch software affect you getting achievements in single player games if you have God mode on or unlimited ammo or stuff like that? That's a great question because in the early days when we started and we didn't have, you know, technology wasn't fully developed, this was certainly a problem. But with Plitch now being the fourth generation of our software, we implemented a one of a kind firewall that detects game routines and actively shuts down the game's communication to a server, which means you can cheat as much as you like in single player with Plitch, but it will never ever get through to the Steam achievements. Okay, like is, is, it, is it difficult to try to implement that? Cause say somebody's an achievement hunter and they really want to get these achievements, but they're having a hard time with the game where they really want to use this item or plug you, like you mentioned before, play a certain way, but they still want to get their achievements. Is it like just impossible to do that because of security reasons with the server through Steam? Uh, it doesn't really have to do with the Steam server. It's our very own firewall that's built into Glitch that regulates uh, that this, th these things are not what you send out. I mean, we can totally understand that. Okay, now you've been, you've spent so much time with a game, like 50 hours in, in that certain level, and you just really, really want to have that achievement. But look, after all, it's a cheat software and a cheated achievement is not a real achievement. So no, we don't allow that. And we, we will never allow that because we think like, it's not called achievement for no reason. Um, it, you know, it's funny because your platform, I mean, it's, you call it cheating software, but you also have things that aren't necessarily cheats, but just are visual changes to some games. Can you elaborate on that? Like making your character larger or having a big head or stuff like that. Can you talk about some of those, uh, modifications that your software offers? Sure. Um, we call them fun cheats, really. Um, we're trying to stay in that, you know, uh, language of cheats where, where we say, yes, we're cheating, but done right. There are certain routines when we cheat a game where we see, okay, if we fiddle around with this routine, we can, as you said, make uh, a hands larger or characters larger, stuff like that. And we implement those too. We just think it's fun, you know, playing games, PC games is fun. Why not have, show people what is technically possible if we can do it? That's the very basic reason. There's this one game, Postal, where we found a routine. So in Postal, you have to, it's basically like a real time simulator, real life simulator. You have to, you know, uh, fix cars and, and, you know, do stuff. And occasionally you have to go and pee. And we found this routine where you can actually make this guy urinate all the time. So you would be running around and just, you know, doing your stuff all over the place, which we found was hilarious when you're trying to, pee, to put a serious angle to the game. I think we're just doing it for the fun, really. Is, is it fun creating those types of, like you said, fun cheats uh, in, the, uh, in new and upcoming games that visually make the game just, you know, funny or, you know, impractical in a visual way? Of course. Uh, I still remember when we did the SpongeBob increase your character code, everybody in the company installed SpongeBob game and we're just playing around and seeing, okay, who could create most funny situations. So yeah, I think overall building cheats is always fun because 
first of all, it gets harder and harder because publishers are trying to hide and secure the games more and more because of their fear that there could be people trying to mess with multiplayer or the achievements. Uh, and on the other hand, games get more and more complex. So they simply have to, you know, um, put the routines into other routines and just trying to hide them and stuff like that and for memory reasons. So uh, there's a lot of reasons. When you do get to one of these these games and you try and you engineer some really, really cool codes like those fun codes, like fun cheats and stuff like that, it feels like a huge achievement. It's 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 like hacking all the time, only only having a white hat on really. You mentioned that you're an, uh, an expert in intellectual property law. Uh, what allows you to do this with other people's games, which is a wide variety of games that are owned by multiple companies and multiple owners? Since I studied intellectual property law in a German language, I'm going to try to translate what I know. Please don't. Do not take that and run to a lawyer and say, is that actually true? We are not fiddling around with the code of the game at all. So what we are doing is temporary changes that are only in the memory. Now, there is a theory there that this is already copyright infringement. However, that theory has, as such, never been ruled by a, um, by a court. And there is no law uh, for this too. So really, the only things when we're talking about intellectual property law is, are we hurting the brand? If we would be doing multiplayer cheats and and you know cheats where you can actually cheat the achievement then potentially one could say you know a lawyer could say well you are hurting the brand because now people do not trust the achievements and multiplayer and things like these but with our technological approach to not just limit but really you know cut this off completely there's no possibility to do so um there cannot be seen any harm to the brand at all so that's what allows us it's it's not even a gap in uh, in jurisdiction. It simply was never intended to be as tight for us to do what we're doing. And then how does your software work? Do you, uh, is it subscription-based? Do you have a pay per cheat code per game? Like how does your financial structure work with your software? We have, we have, we have trainers, I think somewhere around 500 trainers that are complete for free right now. So you can download the software, just start it up, look for free games, hit the play button. And all you have to do, you know, you have to own the game before that. But once you download the glitch, hit the search for the free games, hit the play button, and there you go. Then for every each and every one of our games, we have between one and five cheats. You can just try out. Just does it actually work? That's one of the most asked questions when we're talking to new customers. And we're saying, go ahead, make an account, just give it a shot. And then we have the uh, premium batch and we're selling subscription-based uh, models here that are time limited. So you can have a three month tier or 12 month tier. And the OS tiers unlock all cheats. Only the, there's only a uh, you know difference in time for how long. And then, where can people find more information about Pledge? Where can they go to install? And what operating systems do you support currently? Well, we basically support all modern Microsoft Windows systems. Where you can find more information on Pledge on Pledge.com, of course. I mean, we were ta already talking about Consoli. We really want to go there, but we know we still have quite a way to go. One of the major issues is bringing back that idea of Game Genie, you know, where, where people said, okay, it's totally fine to use a Game Genie on, the, on a Nintendo system. Um, in the last decade, cheats on PC for PC games have really been outlawed. And we, we need to get back into the hands of people and be like, hey, if you're doing it right, it's totally fine to do so. That's one of the major hurdles. And there's one more thing I can tell you. Remember when I said you can make your game harder? So we've had a couple of inquiries from eSport teams where we could actually build like a feature, a glitch feature to train um, their abilities with glitch in a single player mode and, you know, locked up single player mode. And be prepared, there's something we're actually working on for the next couple of months that's interesting because like, i love like i mean you keep we keep throwing back to game genie i just think it's interesting because even game genie back in the day came with a book or a guide that you had to look up your game and if your game wasn't in there there was no internet to look up the code like you were just sol like i think that's we've come we've come a long way but it's still at its core each uh cheat and code needs to be added individually based on the game just like it did in the uh, 80s which is kind of crazy to me yeah absolutely you know times has changed there's a lot of input we get from the community too, what kind of cheat codes they want to have. And we really try to see if there's something missing or if somebody says, look, in level 10, you get a certain gun and your cheat code doesn't work for the gun or I need a cheat code for that gun particularly. Uh, well, we have 
<laughs> we have a couple of uh, you know employees. Their only job is to play games up to a certain point, test the games, test the cheats we do, and send us to safe games if necessary. <laughs>